Natural History Museum. Hey, welcome back, good people. Welcome back to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources, the channel where we remake, repurpose, recycle, and generally make the most we can out of what we have around. In last week's video, I showed you how I got one of those Chinese diesel heaters fresh out of the box, and I fitted it to a window frame without any modifications to the window or the house whatsoever. No holes had to be drilled, and it was a completely safe installation that could provide somebody with extra warmth in a rental situation or in a uh, motel room type situation where people can't go changing things. Today, what I want to do is while I've still got the heater in that position and it's all set up, I'm going to run it out on the rice bran oil and nail polish remover that it was running on last week. And tonight we're going to run it on the last little bit of Jack Daniels that I've got in my bottle. Yeah, and weather like this, I could be sitting down drinking it, but I'm going to take one for the team and donate it to the cause. So come through to the lounge and we'll see how much heat we can get out of the rest of this JDs. So in last week's video, we set up the Chinese diesel heater in the window frame without making any modifications to the house itself. And as a bonus, we didn't go out and buy any of the materials. Everything that was used here either came from within the house or arrived in the box with the Chinese diesel heater. In fact, the casing here was made from the box that the Chinese diesel heater came in. So with the weather that we've been having over the last few days, howling winds and constant pelting rain, uh, this is starting to show signs of wear. Um, it's not quite as waterproof as I hoped it would be, but if I was doing this seriously, I would use either sheet steel or plywood. Moving on, we pretended in this scenario that we didn't have any diesel available. So we used rice bran oil from the kitchen, thinned out with a little bit of nail polish remover because that's got a very high acetone content. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna run out the rice bran oil that's in the fuel line and we're going to drop the fuel line into the rest of this JDs and we'll see if the heater will continue running on 40% alcohol by volume JDs. So the first thing we need to do is get the heater going. There's a 90 second to two minute warm-up phase that this will go through. Let's give it a chance to do its thing. I'll see you back here in 90 seconds. Okay, the heater's just finished doing its warm-up thing. We're about 90 seconds in. I've just set it to run at its 50% setting and we're putting out nice warm air. The fuel pump, you can see the rate at which the fuel pump is pulsing by the twitching of the line. It delivers 0.2 of a milliliter with each pulse. It's not a it's not a fuel pump like in a car that pushes the fuel from the tank down all the way to the engine. This is a metering pump. It's designed to push fuel a short distance in a precisely metered dose. As an alternative to an injector pump system in a car, this is a much cheaper, simpler way of injecting precise amounts of fuel controlled by a CPU, a central computer processing unit. Anyway, I'm, di I'm digressing again. Let's get back into this. We're going to swap out now the rice bran oil for the whiskey. You should be able to see, I'm going to bring you closer in in a moment, you should see a different colour liquid starting to pulse up here and you'll gradually see the fuel filter change colour as we replace the rice bran oil with the whiskey. Then we'll see what we get. The air bubbles from where I did the swap are just coming through. 
So we have a whiskey chaser coming up behind those air bubbles. Come in close and have a look. The two liquids aren't mixing. I can see the whiskey coming in the bottom with a definite separation layer between that and the rice bran oil. Let's speed things up a twitch just to save time. I've just increased the fuel pump speed. You'll hear the fan speeding up. It's all done automatically. These little Chinese diesel heaters are so simple to operate. Yes, I'm having a snack, okay? Takes a while. <clears throat> Although it's hard for you guys to see, because there's so there's such a small difference in colour between the two fuels. The air bubbles, the air bubbles that occurred while I did the changeover have just gone through. So oh, it's shutting down. We've got a, we've had a flame out. That's the end of it. It only ran for a moment. If, if at all, um, that's a fail, guys. Um, you know what this means. We go back to the rice bran oil. And if you guys were here, we could divide this up into nips and finish it between us, but once again, Looks like I'm taking one for the team. So folks, although it's 40% alcohol, it's not enough to keep this thing running. And because it's automated, it's shut down by itself. Once you achieve flame out, the, the whole thing just shuts down. It goes into its shutdown mode. The fan keeps going so that nothing overheats inside, but it's gradually getting colder and colder. It's having one final blow now, and it'll turn off completely in just a moment. So now you know, you don't have to waste your own valuable alcohol trying to get your Chinese diesel heater to run on it, because it won't. Cheers guys. I've just tipped the rest of the whiskey out and I'm now priming the pump back onto rice bran oil. You can see that there's a little puddle of whiskey that won't mix with the rice bran oil that's sitting in the bottom. Um, 40% alcohol just won't cut it when it's mixed with that much water and sugar, I guess. Okay, we're all primed up. I'm going to give the thing a kick in the guts and get it running again on the ordinary stuff. It's just going through its warm-up sequence again because it warms up at the beginning of a use and it cools down at the end of a use. So this thing is never sitting hot in a the cupboard. They remain incredibly cool to the touch when they're running. These things can be put under the seat of an RV and run day and night with no problems whatsoever so long as they're installed correctly. Because they're so tolerant of different installations, you can put them in boats, you can put them in the cabs of trucks, you can use them in small cabins. They're an awesome greenhouse heater. If you put this in a small enough room and run it at high enough speed, it could also be used as a dry sauna. Let's do that. Let's build this into a dry sauna. Leave a comment down below if that's something you want to see. 
we'll head it. I'm thinking of a really small sauna made out of recycled pallet timber and building vapour wrap. So the whole thing costs nothing. Hell, we'll even use the bent nails from the pallets. I reckon we'll hit 50 degrees Celsius. Is that hot enough? Right, so I'm not going outside because it's pelting with rain. But what we're looking at now is the exhaust because I want to see how it's transitioning back to running on cooking oil and nail polish remover. It's got that cooking oil smell again. So obviously we are hitting it, but there's no sign of any smoke, which is good. We've got warm air coming out of here. There's the tiniest puddle of whiskey still sitting in the bottom of the fuel filter, but it doesn't seem to be affecting it. Just picking up and going into its full burnout mode, and oh dear, now, yeah right, now we see... Well that's okay, it needs to burn out that whiskey. This will come right in a moment, or it'll turn itself off. Let's find out. Here we go. I can hear it. It's burning nicely. Here we go. We're away. Lovely and warm. Pumping, burning, heating. While I'm here, I just want to take this opportunity to go through the control panel again. This is a representation of the unit itself. The coloured bars are an indication of the temperature. It's now up to full temperature. The flashing green and red lights show that there are no obstructions in either the inlet or the exhaust, but they're flowing correctly. This icon here indicates that the fuel pump is busy doing its thing. Up here we've got a timer indicator. There are two timers. You can turn these heaters on automatically before you get up in the morning and run it for a couple of hours and it will turn itself off and then you can program it a second time within a 24 hour period to turn on just before you come home from work perhaps and run for the rest of the evening. The icon right at the top here, that's the Bluetooth connectivity because this thing also has a remote. Remember that these things are dirt cheap, they're about $100 US at the moment. I recommend that you should buy one even if you don't need one right now. Finally, up in the top right hand corner is the battery icon. That shows you that you're getting a good, strong, healthy 12 volts. If you're going to install one of these, you will need a decent 12 volt battery because when they're in their warm up mode, they draw 10 amps for about two minutes. After that, it settles down to virtually nothing. Under an amp, I believe. We'll turn it right down. It's actually getting ridiculously hot standing just here. So we're now doing 1.7 pulses per second. And that is its slowest setting. The, the fastest setting is 5.5 pulses per second. You can work out the fuel consumption of these things knowing that each pulse delivers exactly 0.2 of a milliliter. From that, you can do calculations to work out the kilowatts, the fuel consumption, and the total cost of running one of these things. I'm using a Microsoft Xbox power supply because they're a good strong 10 amps 
it has to be rewired slightly there's a handful of wires at the end that normally deliver a 5 volt and a 12 volt feed one for the handset one for the gaming unit they need to be connected together in a specific way to get a good 12 volt supply out of there I showed you how to do that in the previous video but in uncertain times one of these that can be coaxed to run on alternative fuels if it has to be is invaluable in my opinion now stay tuned for the suggested videos because next week I'm gonna see if I can run this thing on Marmite